I mean, if you look at where poker machines are most prevalent and the revenue they gain, they are in the, the poorer areas. Uh, it looks to me like the problems are in uh, labour seats. Di Lee has spoken to me about that many times on this program. I can't really understand why uh, Chris Minns would not move on this. What do you think? Have you got your... Uh, it, 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 is un it is... Yeah, it is... Well, in, in terms of uh, morality and public policy, it is unfathomable. We've got the worst problems in the lowest socioeconomic areas. Uh, so it, it's poorer areas that are hardest hit by problem gambling. You would think a Labor government that proclaimed itself as champions of the workers, champions of poorer people, mm -hmm. will be acting swiftly on this. You can only reach the conclusion that the Premier and his team are scared of the gambling industry, they're beholden to the gambling industry, and they're trying to kick it down the road. All right, let's talk the voice now, because we've had you on this program a number of times that you said that you were waiting to uh, formulate your position, then you told us that you were waiting to see the Senate report, you wanted to read it all. So, Mark Speakman, do you have a position? I'd be disappointed if you hadn't asked me, uh, Laura, <laughs> uh, but my position will be announced uh, very shortly. I have read the report, I've uh, it, it consulted a number of yes and no campaigners, and I expect to be able to announce the position shortly. OK, what does shortly mean? At least give us a time frame. Oh, yeah, I, I, ideally this month. This month? OK. What are you waiting for, if I can ask? Well, it, it's, it's not... Um, it, it, it's, it's a very important issue. Uh, it, it is uh, a, a critical change to the Constitution, and I want to make sure that um, when I announce my position uh, that uh, it, it's fully informed. Uh, there are pros and cons that everyone's been debating. I won't be telling people how to vote wherever I land. I'll be telling people how I will vote, but ultimately it'll be up to them to make up their own minds. Right. But you pretty much made up your mind, but you're just waiting to announce it. Is that right? No, no, no. I, look, I've got some uh, you know, thoughts I've been developing and uh, I'm getting those together and I expect to and be able to announce something shortly. OK, so in the next month, we heard it here uh, first and we expect you to come back on the program when you finally do announce that position. You can even announce it here. So, <laughs> look, just the, the invitation is there. Oh, it's very kind of you, Laura. Thank you. <laughs> look, very kind. At, at the election, I want to raise this with you. Uh, at the election, uh, the New South Wales election, that is, it was um, such a... Uh, the tenor of politics seemed to have changed. There was praise from uh, both Dominic Perrottet and Chris Minns directed at each other, and it was so welcomed by the public and uh, I think the press as well. Uh, while you were away, um, we had the Premier being attacked from one of your shadow ministers for being on leave, and you were in Bali at the time. What's going on there? Oh, look, uh, I think uh, the, the critical thing is that uh, here in New South Wales, uh, we've got a government at the moment that uh, doesn't appear to be able to control its expenses. Uh, Chris Minns promised at the election that uh, wage increases for public sector workers would be funded, fully funded, by productivity increases. What instead we learn now is that even if it's the, the, the earlier offer by the government is accepted, that's going to cost the taxpayer $2.5 billion over four years. So Matt Keane was calling that out and the need for for the Premier to focus, to focus on solving that problem and delivering to the people of New South Wales what he promised, which were wage increases that wouldn't cost the taxpayer anything. OK, but the leave issue, I mean, you've kind of uh, uh, dodged that. Uh, what is your role in kind of elevating the political discourse? And was that all kind of an outlier or is that part of your strategy? No, no, look, 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 I as opposition leader want to have a civilised political discourse, uh, but we won't pull punches. Where, where there is a need to call the government out on breaking election promises, we'll do so. Where we can offer uh, constructive comments, uh, collaborative comments, uh, we'll do so. Like, for example, last week we welcomed uh, changes that the government had made to uh, eligibility for domestic mm. violence, uh, temporary accommodation and uh, other crisis accommodation. Where the government does uh, good things, we'll, we'll congratulate them and, and uh, support them. OK. But where they break election promises, we'll call them out. All right, fair enough. But just to be clear, you've got no problem with the Premier going on leave? Of course not. Look, the, look uh, all politicians have to go on leave at some stage. And if you take a bit of leave, you actually come back refreshed and recharged. Uh, I, took, mm. I took a week's leave and uh, I'm now back refreshed, recharged, reinvigorated <laughs> and um, able to take on the government. Call them out where they make mistakes and congratulate them and uh, collaborate where they do the right thing.
And fresh for AM Agenda, of course, and we'll be speaking to you in the next month, Mark Speakman, if not before. Thanks for your time as always.